this point. Long story. Sit tight. Here we go. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning back in. Really appreciate all the comments. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Comment below what you think uh, I should do after you hear this video. I'm going to make it short and sweet. This is about buying a Ferrari 360 and the process I went through and the agony it's put me through. I'm going to share with you real briefly in this video. If you want to see a longer video, let me know. So basically, I started shopping for um, a 360 Spider with a manual transmission in September 2020. And uh, prices at that time ranged from 85000 to 150000 depending on mileage and, and color combination and, and uh, service history and, and things like that. So I was looking for mileages under 20000 And uh, when I was shopping, there was one silver car here locally in, in, in San Francisco Bay Area that traded um, for a really good price. And I was just too late, too late to that deal. I wanted it. It was really nice. It had sport seats and uh, it's pretty cool. Silver on silver. Uh, missed that one. So I started looking around the nation, looking online. Uh, I think everybody does shop on the internet now for cars. So I figured, hey, why not? Let me try it out. I, I, I looked at some Grigio Ingrid, uh, 360 Spiders, and Jello Modenas, Russell Corsas, and almost got a TDF blue one. Uh, but none of those offers really stuck, the ones that I made. I was trying to get a, a deal. I was only asking for a 10K off list, but most of the dealers just were not going to go for that. I wanted a good deal that, uh, in theory, the car can go up in value, right? So if I get a little discount up front, that will give me some cushion uh, for some surprises along the road. Now, I also wanted to buy from a very well-known dealership, not a private party. I just didn't feel comfortable dealing with the uh, paperwork and everything involved, uh, private party to private party. It's just uh, out of my comfort level. So I wanted to deal with a, a big dealership, if not a Ferrari franchise. I ended up dealing with a um, uh, very well-known dealership in Ohio. They are not a Ferrari franchise. They are a private dealership that sells used Ferraris. And so I also did some research online um, and I tried to watch every single 360 video there was out there. Rob Ferretti has a bunch of them, so does uh, Seen Through Glass. And I saw a few horror stories of people that bought 360s on YouTube and ended up spending $40,000 just to sort the cars out. I thought, there's no way in hell that's going to happen to me. I'm way too smart for that to happen. Well, let's go ahead and give, give you the details of my story. So I got... My offer accepted on this car from a used Ferrari dealer in Ohio. We settled on a number less than 100000 I thought it was a great deal given that the car was fully sorted according to them and great uh, service history, which is all documented. According to the PPI, which the dealer set up for me, there were zero major mechanical or cosmetic issues with the car. So once I received the car, that was just not the case. <laughs> The car I received did not match the description. There are just three major items I, I currently have a dispute with the seller on. Number one, cosmetic damage. The car arrived with the broken convertible top, like this piece just rattling over your head as soon as you start the car. And there was cracked fiberglass in two spots in the front bumper. It hadn't been an accident, but there's visible cracks on both sides of the um, vents on the front bumper. It just just didn't look good. It's one of those things I had to fix, it just bothered me, I can't, can't drive around a car with something like that. Cost to fix these two items, $10,000. Which seems like a lot because it is a lot. <laughs> Everything on, you touch on a Ferrari is kind of ridiculous when you, you compare it to like a Porsche or something else with uh, like a Mercedes or BMW. Anything that has a lot of support from the manufacturer where parts are readily available. It's way cheaper than a Ferrari um, project car. Let's call it a project car now. So for this cosmetic damage, I settled on $2,300 uh, refund from the shipping company. So it's not 
what I wanted, but it's something, and I figure, okay, I'll just pay the difference, right? But the worst part about this issue is that I was not able to even source the broken convertible part, because this is a piece of cast aluminum. It looks like uh, it's just a rattly plastic trim. No, it is a cast aluminum block. It's like uh, as big as a, a small little shoe box, and that piece alone is like $2,500 used, which is just crazy, right? So now I have, I'm on a list. I'm waiting for another car to get wrecked, parted out, so I can buy that part instead of buying the whole entire convertible assembly, which is just ridiculous. Um, but that's what that's what I'm dealing with on on the cosmetic part. So the solution in the meantime is they just uh, my shop just epoxied them together. They put an aluminum backer rod and just epoxy the thing together. At least it's not rattling. Um, I'm not really looking at it, you know, I'm not really looking up when I'm driving, so it's not uh, visually bothering me. And when the top is down, it's it's nowhere to be found either. So that's another, I'm just keeping the top down for now. Um, number two, the car is missing the manuals, the booklet, and the second key, and the immobilizer. So when I got the car, all those things were missing. The seller said, no, no, it has to be there. I'm sure it's there. It's impossible. If it's not, well... They weren't. So they looked in the office and they found everything they said. They said they FedExed to me the next day. I got a package. I got everything they said except it's missing the second physical key, as in the key that goes into the actual ignition. Yes, old cars still put them in the ignition. So I'm missing the silver key. If you have Ferrari, it's first key is red, second key is silver. I'm missing the silver key. And they they mean nothing but excuses since February. Here we are in May. Nothing but excuses. Just ignoring me and giving me excuses. Told me they bought it uh, from this website in February and they're waiting for a tracking number. They're waiting for the uh, blank key to arrive and they'll cut it. If they can't cut it, they'll mail it to me and they'll pay me for me to get it cut here at the local Ferrari Silicon Valley dealership. None of that's happened, okay? None of that's happened. That's why I think I'm a very patient guy. I wait three months. Or I wait uh, all of February, all of March, all of April. Yeah, I wait three months for this to happen. It didn't happen. So I'm thinking, hey, they're just trying to ghost me and just get rid of me. So I even emailed the supplier. They said they got the part from. And the supplier says they have no record of the order. So what am I going to think? I'm thinking... Obviously, I'm being lied to, right? What would you think? Comment below. Uh, would you? How long would you wait for the key to arrive? Number three. This is the big one, okay? The car arrived with a check engine light. Oh, all the things that can happen. A check engine light, right? Just kind of... A lot of things go into your head like, Oh my gosh, is something wrong with the engine? Or what kind of big ticket item did I get myself into? So when I contacted the dealer, they just told me to keep driving it until it cycles and the check engine light will go away. They said, Rob, you have nothing to worry about. This is totally normal. We do this all the time because you have a different sea level where you're at in San Francisco area versus where we're at in Ohio. So therefore, the car sensors need to be reset. The monitors need to be reset. So I've never heard of that before. I you know, immediately went on ferrarichat.com. There's no articles, no threads about that topic. I, I drove it around. It didn't go away, okay? So I took it to my nearest mechanic, um, very well-known mechanic, Tarmina in San Carlos, and they proceeded to drive the car around, clear the codes, it kept coming back. Turns out, um, you know, I have two cylinders misfiring. Okay, and here in California as well, when you get a car from out of state, if you don't take the car to get it past smog, you can't even register. You can't get license plates. And so I'm really frustrated at this point. I'm just like losing my cool. I'm just wondering when am I going to get my car back? You know, I, I, I bought it end of uh, 2020 and... 
here I am in May. I'm still dealing. I, I have the car. I, it's it's drivable, but I'm still dealing with issues. And this, the solution for the check engine light was new coils, new spark plugs, a thermostat. Uh, funny enough, seen through glass also had a similar experience where these parts need to be replaced. Uh, you can check on his channel for that uh, analysis by his, his mechanic, Aldous Voice, who's a big contributor on FerrariChat.com. But luckily uh, for Sam, he has an aftermarket warranty. I have no warranty, okay? Uh, so it's all coming out of my pocket, at least at first. And there was also two leaking fuel lines discovered, which if those weren't replaced, you know, the car could have caught on fire. If the fuel leaks, you know, these supercars are all famous on the internet for catching on fire, right? So I kept all the old parts for evidence. Uh, and I also confronted the PPI company and the seller, and they both said, what I'm saying is impossible. Um, they basically accused me of trying to defraud them, making this all up, even though I provided printouts of the uh, check engine codes, everything, uh, all the proof that I could ever provide, I provided. Right, they said all that I was saying was impossible because the car was serviced in 2019, and everything was fine at that time, and it basically sat undriven in the dealership until I purchased it, end of 2020. So I spent $8,000 on the check engine light work. Yeah, not a good surprise, right? So once I got the car back, I got it back about 10 days ago, the car drove like a dream. I loved it. It was amazing, just analog heaven, right? Then I got a check engine light and I said, oh, you have to be kidding me. <laughs> how, how am I going through this again? So I took it. The only thing I had done with the car, I had, I had gone to fill up the gas. So I thought maybe it's a gas cap error. I opened the cap. I tightened it extra, extra tight. I brought it back to the shop. It was an EVAP uh, warning and we cleared the code. The car was fine. Another five days later, same thing comes back, it's EVAP again. So now um, they told me I have to uh, burn out the gas as much as possible, maybe drive, I can drive 100 miles and, and get the tank as close to empty as possible, bring it back, and they're gonna pump uh, white smoke into the lines and figure out where the plastic is cracked and get that line replaced. So um, that's not something I, I expected the PPI to catch. Hey, it's something you only get when you're driving it for a while, I get it. But the other stuff, absolutely, visibly leaking fuel lines and, you know, the cylinders misfiring, that's just not something I wanted to be dealing with. I wanted a fully sorted car. I didn't want to buy a project car. So that's the situation I'm in. I'm waiting for a missing key. I'm waiting to get paid for all this check engine light work. And now I have to put the car back in the shop one more time. Hopefully the last time for a long time. So comment below, what should I do to be made whole on the situation? Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I can make a much longer video with all the juicy details. If you would like to see that video, please comment below. And once I get an update on this situation, I will post an update video.